that's very, very exciting. Um, so it's me and 150 slides between now and the lunch break. But no, just, okay, <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so I'm going to kick it off with a little video. I work for Siemens for the uh, industry software division. I'm responsible for business operations for a product line that is called Solid Edge, which is entry-level engineering tools. Um, I'm responsible for business operations, but also our academic initiative. And our academic initiative is highly focused uh, in particular also on K-12 education. So I'm very excited here to uh, introduce you to some of the tools that we have available uh, for teams, uh, like yourself in the Solar Car Challenge, and of course, for any type of design that you might be doing at your school. Uh, we talked a lot about, uh, about things that are hard and difficult and expensive when it comes to material. Um, so what we're offering here is uh, something that you won't have to worry about because we have very good training material for our software, which is free available online. And also our software is available for free for educational purposes. So you should be able to, to get going here fairly quickly. Uh, just a note, there's a link on our webpage to that software so you can go straight to the location and download it. Perfect. Thank you, Will. Um, so a lot of people have heard about Siemens, but don't really know what we do. And so I'm just going to give a brief introduction. So Siemens has been around for more than 150 years, started off in Germany, but it's now a, a global engineering company. We have 350,000 employees worldwide, and we pretty much build everything from high-speed trains, x-ray machines, to uh, power plants. Um, in Dallas alone, I think we have at least five locations. Uh, Grand Prairie, they actually build breaker boxes, so professional commercial breaker boxes uh, that power hospitals and, and, and other large entertainment facilities as well. So we're not just software, we're also building stuff. We have a lot of the engineers that wake up every day to drive innovations in all these different products. We're pretty big in the US, so chances are that wherever you're from, there's going to be a, a Siemens location, a Siemens office, or a factory close by. Uh, a lot of engineers that are uh, just you know, very knowledgeable in terms of building things and engineering things. So a real good opportunity for you guys also to connect locally. What you see here is a car that has been designed, built, and manufactured by one of our partners. This is actually a fully 3D printed car. Can I get a guess? What do you guys think how long it took to get this thing built. I'm not just talking building, I'm talking having the idea, designing the parts, and then shipping the fossil with the 3D printer. Five, 10 years. Five, 10 years, okay. Good guess. What do you guys think, it, how long it takes for a professional automotive manufacturer or company to design a car, build a car, manufacture a car, have it hit the road? All right, those are good guesses. How much time do you guys have to build your solar car? <laughs> well, it's a process, as I heard. So this is really what's going on in the marketplace right now, which is pretty amazing. It's scary if you're not prepared, or it's exciting if you're in a place where you are, where you're just about to embark on this journey to hopefully become an engineer. 
So industry average for an established auto manufacturer is six years. From the idea of having a car, designing it, manufacturing it, have it hit the road, and get going. The car I just showed you, one and a half months. When we started partnering with this company, they were already done with 12 months. That's how they started. This car, you may have seen it, it's actually uh, staring in the latest Fast and the Furious um, movie, as well as, I think it was the last Transformers movie or the one before. So these guys are becoming pretty, pretty famous because they're doing some really cool things. Um, and what they do is, for one, yes, they do 3D printing, of course, that's a very quick way of, of, of getting stuff out. But what they also do is they're using heavily what they call crowdsourcing. So they don't have all those engineers on staff that design all these parts for the car. They rely on a big community and a big platform, and they provide challenges. They say, I need the best steering wheel, I need the best wheels, I need the best hood, I need the best chassis. And then they get all these ideas from around the globe, and then they pick the best, and then that's how they can be so quick in getting products like these to the market. And so, because of all these changes, because Siemens is innovating on the hardware side as well, we have products, right? So we gotta be absolutely up to date on the latest and greatest engineering technology also on the software side. And we're really the only company out there right now that has both. The software aspects, the tools that engineers use, as well as our own engineers that are really our toughest customers and challenging us to just get better and better and better with the tools that we're providing. So, to be a bit more specific, I talked about how scary the world is right now with all these rapid changes, right? If you're not ready to get your product out quicker with these, you know, shortening and shortening product life cycles, it is a really, really, really dangerous place to be in. And of course, you've got more and more competitors hitting the market. So you've got this increased pressure of innovation. You've got the shortening product life cycles, this crowdsourcing design concept where a lot of people, you know, provide ideas and what Siemens is leading this industry 4.0 story of digitalization, which will allow personalized items to be produced in a mass production concept. So right now it's a trade-off, right? You can have something personalized and expensive or mass produced and standardized. That's gonna go away. So with Siemens leading the software side and the hardware side, you will get to a point where you can pick and choose what you want, personalized, and you can take advantage of all the mass production aspects because all these things are being linked. And so we talked about drawings, designs, modeling. So to be specific now, this is all this big, right? So you're not going to 3D print your solar car, but what it really boils down to is your initial aspect, your first step to become an engineer, to get into the engineering process is 3D CAD, 3D modeling. And so if you are not using a 3D CAD tool, I highly encourage you to start using it we're going to talk about some of the reasons. And if you're already using one, I would even more encourage you to take that learning and take the next step, checking out Siemens and Solid Edge technology. Because the challenge with a lot of the established 3D CAD tools out in the market is that they are dated, they are old. And I'm not talking about, well, yeah, I got the latest release. No. At its core, the fundamental base technology is almost 30 years old now. And that is a challenge because it, it, it limits designers, it limits innovation, and it's going to be a very dangerous place for you guys to be in if you set on this old stuff and say, yeah, I know this, and then by the time, you know, you, you look for a job, the world has changed, right? And again, for those guys here that are using 3D CAD already, can I get a quick raise of hands? Anyone familiar with 3D modeling? Perfect, quite a few. So the, if, if you're not using what we call circuit technology, your CAD tool would be based on what's called history-based modeling. So you have a feature, you add a feature, you add a feature, you add a feature, and you build this history tree on the side of your tool. Does it, I see some nodding. So the challenge with that is two things. So for one, if you guys leave, you graduate, and you know, pass your models on to the next generation of students that come into the program, they will have no idea how you built that freaking model. So they're gonna start from scratch, right? Or they're gonna spend weeks just unravel this tree, trying to figure out what the heck did this guy do, right? We need this wheel to be bigger wider, this didn't work. You can't make those changes with history-based modeling. If you launch a new car in less than two months, you can spend a month just trying to figure out how the heck did this model has been put together by my predecessor. You gotta be able to just get in there, get going, make the changes you wanna need and, and, and move on. Um, also, 
if you're using 3D CAD, you think about building a car. Your first step is probably going to be to go out on the web and try and find parts that you can reuse, right? So you don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? You don't have to go in there and draw a battery. Someone did that, right? A bar, the roll bar. There's stuff out there you can just drag and drop. The challenge is, if you use history-based modeling, you can't change it. You need to find the exact part, exact measurements. What you can do, again, with synchronous technologies, because we don't need that history feature tree, you just go in and, and drag it, right? So the bar is an inch too short, you just stretch the surface, make it dodger. And that's really why Siemens is so much betting on this synchronous technology, the new modeling technique, because it's going to be uh, much more suitable for the crowdsourcing environment, it's going to be much more suitable for team collaboration, um, and of course this whole concept of having to, to rapidly make adjustments to a model. And so with that, I want to challenge you here a little bit with a really short demo. So let's say you've got built this jack, right? And you can think about similar shapes that you might find in your solar car. And you go into scrutineering or you reach out and get feedback from the judges and they come back and say, well, this won't work. We have for these reasons. We need this, some of those changes being made. So what you see here is really what I'm talking about. There's no history tree over here. You don't have to worry about how this was built. This could have been built by anyone. You could have found this on the internet. You just go in and you can drag the surfaces and move the surfaces around. Because what synchronous technologies allows you to do is to take advantage of the, the model, the, the features, the measurements, and everything that's on the model, right? Not, not the drawing or anything like that. We don't care about the drawing. You just get going, you just drag and drop, you just touch what you want to change, and then you move things along. So to give you a bit of perspective, if you're not using CAT, um, I'm just going to touch on some of these. If you're using CAD, you will be familiar with this for the most part. So with the Solid Edge portfolio, you will be able to create CAD parts. We'll be able to create CAD assemblies. And I mean, again, for the new people, you don't have to draw the whole car. You don't have to draw every nuts and bolts. Just get started, right? So maybe there's a piece you want to 3D print. Maybe the chassis, you want to figure out, does, is it really going to work? Is the person going to fit in there that's supposed to drive it? So there are a lot of ways where you can just, just get started. Talk about safety. Um, there's a simulation tool right in there. So if you want to know if this roll bar is going to be strong enough, you know, again, it's going to be a learning, but you will be able to run very simple simulation analysis on there to prove to the judges, yeah, we thought this through. This works. Um, manufacturing, I mean, of course, if you want to go into a CNC machine or anything like that, we've got a solution for that. Um, the only other aspect I want to touch on, which is not on here, is rendering. Um, I was listening to one presentation this morning talking about getting sponsors. If you go with pen and paper to a sponsor, take it a step further. Imagine you design your car, it doesn't have to be the final one, just your concept, your idea, and you actually 3D model it, put it maybe in front of the Texas Motor Speedway, right there in the software, and then you go to a sponsor and say, that's what I want to build. That's going to have a, quite an impact. So, even if you're still just in the conceptual phase of thinking about what is this car going to look like, starting to use a tool, a professional engineering tool, would go a long way for you guys to start securing the funding that you're looking for to then actually pull it off down the road to actually build it. And the exciting thing is um, that with you guys, and I'm so appreciative of this partnership, there are a lot of things that we can offer for you guys that we have right on the pipeline that Siemens is actually developing. So the first step for Siemens to get into the software space was 2007 when we acquired a company called UGS, which is headquartered here in Plano. Um, that was actually uh, what brought me to the software business and actually down here to Texas. So it was a very exciting time for all of us. But Siemens keeps drawing, and we keep adding more and more pieces to the portfolio. And what I want to say here, I'm going to spare you the details here, but the exciting things are we've actually added composite expertise. We talked about composites earlier. So composites is very difficult to adequately apply to a vehicle. So we have a lot of companies in the yacht industry that build ships. And you know, we've got these layers and layers and layers, and they've got to be cut exactly. Otherwise, you start having bubbles, you start having a material overlay. It's causing a lot of issues. We have a solution for that, right? So it's not quite ready yet because it's difficult stuff as we heard this morning that I would say, well, okay, solar car teams, go ahead. But I mean, we'll get there. Right? We'll get there. We've got to make this easier to use for simpler models, and there's definitely an option for that. Another highlight that I want to uh, highlight here is TESS International. So Google is walking around talking about how many miles an autonomous vehicle has been driving. 
that's nice, it's a good start, good contribution, uh, good marketing, <laughs> but I mean, in all seriousness, before you're ready to have a car approved by TSA or whoever to be able to hit the road without a driver, you're gonna need like 20 times as many miles to prove this works and is safe. And I mean, yeah, you can do that with a vehicle and then maybe in 50 years where we got the miles down to make the pitch, right? What this company does is it's actually simulating how you know, autonomous vehicles gonna react on the marketplace with all these different things that are happening. So this is very, very serious business. And I won't be surprised if 10 years from now, we're, we're gonna talk about the autonomous solar car challenge right here, because that's clearly where the future is gonna be. We're working and, on it. We're working on it. Excellent. And just, I mean, talking about, you know, kind of the, the depth of the Siemens portfolio, our traffic business is actually in the business of autonomous vehicles in terms of traffic controls. Getting the car to move is one thing, but you've got to make sure that you've still got the traffic lights going on and off in the right direction. You've got to make sure that they send signals to the cars to stop, to accelerate. So um, this is really where all these pieces are coming together. And um, again, we're kind of the only company right now, the only player that understands both how to build stuff and how to design stuff, simulate stuff, so it's ready. And um, in terms of more specific things, you know, autonomous vehicles might be a bit down the road, but other things that are much more applicable for you is um, an acquisition of a simulation and ECAT company that Siemens did about a year ago. So Solid Edge is right now going through a portfolio expansion. Um, so a year from now, we're not, I'm not going to be here alone. I'm going to have a partner here with me that's going to talk about ECAT, Solid Edge Electrical, which is going to be fully integrated. So for you guys on the solar car team side, you can have a guy doing the electrical drawings. You can work on that. At the same time, you have a mechanical guy who's going to put, put the chassis together. And yeah, no, you don't have to well, should talk, but you don't have to talk because the change is going to just circulate, right? The, the electrical stuff is going to change, and we'll see it in the mechanical side and, and, and all the way back. Um, I saw on the agenda this afternoon you guys are going to talk about aerodynamic, and I think that's extremely important once you hit a certain speed level. If you don't have a lot of power behind it, I drive a truck, so I don't care so much about it, but you know, when it comes down to, you know, using solar car or, or you know, if you try to get your vehicle as light as possible, you might as well also make sure that it's air, as aerodynamic as possible, so it's most efficient. Long story short, you can do a lot of those things medically and on paper. Solid edge flow analysis is going to do that for you. You got the model in in, uh, in the tool, and again, it doesn't have to be down to the nuts and bolts, right? Just think about this is the shade we're shooting for with the car. You put it in a virtual wind tunnel, you hit the button, and you're going to get the simulation. It's going to tell you, okay, we got a problem right here, we got a problem there, all good there. And if you think, again, if you don't use a tool like this, and you have a problem, you're going to go through your 50, 100 sheets of paper with a rubber in to change everything. Um, again, you will not have that problem here if you're using a 3D CAD tool to begin with, because you can just make the changes, rerun the analysis, and you will know whether we fix the problem or not. Um, Another feature that we are getting into is called next generation design, uh, convergent modeling. This sounds very abstract, but the, the model down here will give you a little bit of an idea. So traditional manufacturing processes are limited by how you can actually make changes to a raw material. So CNC machining is pretty much cutting away pieces of metal, of a, a piece of metal, right? So to get to the final shape. So the bottom line is, there are certain pieces that might be better designed this way, but they're not, because the machine can do that, right? Or if you do things manually with welding, and again, those are bigger pieces, but there are certain things where you just have to do them in a certain way because it can be manufactured differently. 3D printing doesn't care. So what you do with generative design is, you know you want to 3D print a part, you just say, I expect this to, having to hold 50 pounds, it's not allowed to bend more than a quarter of an inch or whatever the conditions are, and you're gonna get these really cool shapes because you can eliminate all the material that's not really required, but that's only there because the manufacturing process doesn't allow to cut away certain pieces because the tool can't reach those corners. And there are customers using this. This is a customer of ours down in South California. Um, he's building trophy trucks. He's a trophy truck driver and he's in the business of providing very unique parts that contribute to the, the guys that are actually building those, those trucks. And you know, down here you can see a paddle, and again, the same thing. You couldn't build this paddle with a CNC machine, but he can 3D print it, and all of a sudden he's going to cut the weight down 30%, 40%, 50%, or whatever, and that's really a game changer. That's really a game changer for him. So, um, as I said before, or uh, said, has been said before, um, you will get 
the full commercial version of SolidEdge. The video did give you kind of an idea of the type of products that are being designed in Siemens technology and SolidEdge. So this is the full version that all of our commercial customers are using. Um, it's a free student download, so again, the only restriction is you can use it for any commercial purposes, but for your teachers, uh, mentors, as long as you use it for the, the concept of the SOAR card challenge, um, you're free to go to use that download and, and get started.